Amen. Amen. Brethren, I take this opportunity to welcome you all to this session. And uh, we thank God for giving us another week and for protecting us. And uh, it's my hope and trust that you have also had a wonderful week, that you also got time to go over the previous presentation that we had on this series as we continue looking at Revelation 17. So welcome everyone joining us on Zoom. And uh, remember, as always, at the end of the presentation, you will have an opportunity to ask a question or even to give a comment. And uh, if there's any point you will not have understood, you have an opportunity to seek for clarification. So welcome everyone as we continue uh, studying this chapter, Revelation 17. Today we are looking at uh, swelling uh, of Jordan and Armageddon. This is by Elder Demetrius Leach from Barbados. Thank you so much, Elder, for joining us and uh, looking forward to being blessed by what God has prepared you with for us this evening. Welcome, Elder Demetrius. Thank you so very much, Elder Karuga. It is truly a blessing to be here again, another Wednesday evening that we can study God's word. I trust that you are in fact studying because this Revelation 17, it is, a, it is a very deep one and that is why we are going over and over certain things that you can get it. I'm gonna invite you to pray with me as we begin. Father in heaven and merciful God, we thank you very much for being our God and our Savior. And we ask in the name of Jesus that you bless all of those who are on this evening to receive a word from you to prepare us for the end times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we are looking at swelling the Jordan and Amen. Armageddon. Now, we're going to launch right into the chapter. We are going to look back again at verse 11 and then go forward smoothly into what we want to focus on this evening. So in verse 11 of 17, this is what it says. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goes into perdition. Remember, this is not an eighth beast. It is not an eighth head because they're not eight heads. It is not an eighth horn. It is not an eighth crown or eighth kingdom. This primarily is the eighth manifestation of Satan. This is his personal personification of Christ, Karuga. Amen. Amen. Basi ndugu karibuni sana katika fundisho la siku ya leo napokuwa tukiendelea katika fundisho hili la ufunuo 17 na siku ya leo tunaangazia swala hili ambalo ni kufurika kwa Yordani na Armageddon. Na basi tunanzia na kitabu kile cha ufunuo 17 mstari wake ni wa 11 ambao inatuambia na yule mnyama aliyekuwako naye hayuko yeye ndiye wa nane na Nae ni mmoja wa wale saba, nae aenenda kwenye uharibifu. Na kumbuka ya kwamba huyu si mnyama wa nane, wala si kicho cha nane, wala siyo pembe ya nane, ama taji ama ufalme. Bali ni dirisho la nane la shetani. Na kama vile ambao tuleza kuangalia ni yeye mwenyewe atakapo muiga Yesu Kristo, aa, basi dirisho hilo ndilo hilo about la zungumzwa likiwa la nane. Thank you and back to you elder. Good. So the beast primarily you have the dragon in Revelation 12 primarily is Satan. Secondarily is pagan Rome. The beast in Revelation 13 primarily is Satan. Secondarily papal Rome. And the beast in Revelation 17 is primarily Satan, and secondarily, Protestant, false Protestant America, and especially from a religious point of view. So that is why we are going to focus on the 10 horns. 
before you do that, may that statement for us, Karuga. Okay, basi uh, ndugu tunapokuwa tukiendelea, uh, kumbuka katika tafsiri ya Biblia tumekuwa tukiweza kuona ya kwamba mnyama kwa tafsiri ya kwanza anawakilisha shetani. Lakini kwa tafsiri ya pili basi ni zile falme mbalimbali mbali ambazo anatibia kuweza kujiwakilisha. Na basi basi pale tunaona katika ufundo 17 ya kwamba tafsiri ya kwanza ni kwamba ni shetani lakini akiwa anawakilishwa kupitia kwa uprotestanti ule uh, bandia ambao tuleza kuangalia hasa tunapokuwa tukizungumza katika mtazamo wa kidini na basi tunapokuwa tukiendelea tukuni vizuri tukumbuke pointi kama zile thank you back to you elder so what about the 10 horns in verse 12 and verse 13 it says and the 10 horns which thou sawest are 10 kings not 10 individual kings but it means 10 kingdoms which have received no kingdom as yet. So they have not received the kingdom from a, a global point of view as persecutory powers as yet. But it says, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. So when false Protestantism makes an image to the beast, the other Protestant global countries of the world, they will then receive with false Protestantism in America, the opportunity to reign as persecutory powers. And in verse 13, it says, these have one mind, that is, all of the horns have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. We will comment on that after the translation. Okay, thank you so much. Kwa hiyo basi tunapo endelea. Basi tumeza kuwana ya kwamba tafsiri ya kwanza ya mnyama ni shetani na kini badaye ni serekali ama mamlaka tofauti ambayo anatumia lakini je nazo zile pembe kumi ni nini basi tunapo enda pale katika funuo kumina mbili kumina saba uh, mstari wa kumina mbili sama hani it's revelation 17 verse 12 kufunuo kumina saba mstari wa kumina mbili nasema na zile pembe kumi ulizo ziona ni wafalme kumi amba hawajapokea ufalme bado lakini wapokea mamlaka kama wafalme muda wa saa moja wa moja na yule mnyama Kwa hivyo, takapo weza, weza kuungana na kuweza kuwa mamlaka ya kuweza kutesa watu wa mungu ni katika wakati huo basi ndipo wateza kutawala pamoja na yule mnyama. Na ukuno kumina saba msari wa kumina tatu inasema hawa wanashauri moja na wampa yule mnyama nguvu zao na mamlaka yao. Kwa hivyo, uh, hayo ndiyo tuleza ni baadhi ya mamba mbao tulikuwa tumeangalia Lakini tutapo kuwa tusonga mbele, basi tutazidi kuelewa zaidi. Back to you, Ella. Good. So, the ten horns, generally, are the nations, all of the nations. We saw ten as a general number. All of those nations of the earth that are, especially those that are based upon Protestant Republican governmental structures and systems, these are the ten horns. So Protestantism will adopt the, and, and also enforce the principles of the papacy. The papacy as a city will ride the crest of popularity supported by pro Protestantism, which receives its power from the nations. Karuga. Amen. Basi tunapo kuwa tukiendelea. Uh, uprotestanti huu uh, ni upi. Tunambiwa hivi katika rohe unabi. Ka kwamba ni nini samahani ni nini kinacho mpa mamlaka ufalme huu uprotestanti. Nguvu ambayo 
ingawa inakiri kuwa na tabia na roho ya mwana kondo na kuwa washirika wa bingu inazungumza kwa sauti ya joka inasukumwa na nguvu kutoka chini basi tunapokuwa tukiangalia hali hii uh, protestanti utaweza kutumia misingi ya kipapa itaweza kufuata njia ile ambayo upapa uliweza kuunafuata katika karne ambayo zileza kupita ilipokuwa ikitawala kama taifa ama kama mamlaka ya kuweza kutesa wana wa Mungu kwa hivyo haya ni mambo ambayo yataweza kujirudia kupitia kwa protestanti bandia thank you and back to you elder good so that statement there in english is this what is it that gives its kingdom to the power, to this power that is to call catholicism it is, you're speaking about catholicism what is it that gives its kingdom to catholicism protestantism a power which while professing to have the temper and spirit of the lamb and to be a light to heaven speaks with the voice of a dragon it is moved from the power from beneath there you have therefore you have false protestantism and catholicism they will have one mind that is the carnal mind of satan satan is the spirit that unites and that drives them in the path that they are going karuga amen bas ti ah uh, tunapokuwa tukiendelea ah uh, nakuja kuona ya kwamba u protestant hu bandia ukiweza kushikana na ukatoliki basi wataweza kuwa na nia moja na hii nia moja ni nia ya shetani maana ukumbuke ya kwamba roho ambayo inaunganisha ni roho ya shetani na basi ndipo sasa inaweza fanya wanaweza kuwa na hiyo nia moja ambayo baadaye itaweza kuwa nia ya kuweza kutesa watu wa Mungu back to you elder good now i want for us to take note we are going a little deeper now i know we are deep already but we're going a little deeper i want for us to note what the woman there in revelation 17 which is catholicism as a city not as a world empire catholicism had its day as a world empire it will not have its day anymore as a world empire it has its day now as a city that will have opportunity to reign when when protestantism is reigning but it won't force to know what it sits upon make that statement karuga before we go ah uh, basi tunapokuwa tukiendelea ah uh, ni vizuri kuweza kushika kwamba ah uh, ukatoliki ah uh, yani yule mama ambayo ni ukatoliki basi yeye hapo ama anapokuja kuelezewa anaelezewa kama uji na pia anaelezewa kama yule ambaye ameweza kuketi na ni nini hii ambao ameweza kuketi juu yake basi tunapokuwa tukiendelea wacha tuweze kuona mafungu yale tuweze kuelewa ile point thank you back to you elder good so notice what she is sitting upon this is very instructive revelation 17:1 the great whore that sitteth upon many waters what is she sitting upon many waters but in verse 3 notice what it says verse 3 a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast how is it that she is sitting upon many waters and at the same time she is sitting upon a scarlet colored beast we want to be able to unravel that but in verse 9 notice what it says the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth so we have to bring these three together one she sits upon many waters two she sits upon the beast three she sits upon seven mountains and this is speaking about her as a city and not as a world empire karuga Amen. Amen. Basi tunapoendelea ah uh, uh, napolinganisha mafungu yafuatayo basi inatusaidia tuweze kuelewa ni nini ambacho 
mwanamke huyu ameweza kuketi juu yake. Basi tunaambiwa pale katika funuo 17 mstari wa kwanza yule kahaba mkuu aketie juu ya maji mengi. Alafu kisha uh, 17 mstari wa tatu inasema mwanamke ameketi juu ya mnyama mwekundu sana. Alafu kisha ukilinganisha na funuo 17 mstari wa tisa tunaambiwa vile vicha saba ni milima saba anayokalia mwanamke huyo. Kwa hivyo uh, Ye, kwa hivyo katika ta, picha ama katika taswiri ambayo tunaletoa pale ni yeye kama mji ambayo ana lakini si kama u, ufalme ambao unatawala dunia yote. Kwa hivyo anaonekana ameketi juu ya maji mengi, anaonekana ameketi juu ya mnyama mwekundu na pia anaonekana akiwa ameketi juu ya milima saba. Thank you back to you elder. Good. Now I want for you to remember that biblically a mountain represents a kingdom we have mount zion or babylon is seen as a, a mountain that is burnt so mountain represents a kingdom seven mountains then would represent seven kingdoms would she as a city be sitting upon seven kingdoms Yes. How so? You can go back to Revelation 13 and you will see one beast, but it has the lion in it, the bear in it, the leopard in it, and the dragon in it. But by the time we get to verse, to verse chapter 17, you now have the other two that she is sitting upon. So all of the manifestations of Satan will be compacted in one conglomerate world system that she will be reigning over. Those are the seven heads. Karuga. Amen. Amen. Lea na katika kweza kuangalia. Uh, meza kuna ya kuamba meketi katika milima saba. Na ukumbuke katika tafsiri ya unabi milima huwa inawakilisha falme. Kwa hivyo, ameketi, amekalia milima saba. Hiyo ni kumanisha amekalia falme saba. Ni kweli, ndiyo. Ana ukiangalia pale katika funuo kuminatatu. Basi tunoneshwa mwanamke ama tunoneshwa mnyama mmoja. Lakini, akona mwili wa simba, akona tunaweza inatajwa pale dubu ina, inatajwa pia uh, chui na pia joka alafu kisha unapoenda mstari wa 17 uh, sura ya 17 basi inataja zile zingine kwa hivyo unakuja kuona ya kwamba mnyama yule anaonesha akiwa katika kamilifu wake wote ambaye katika madhirisho saba ambayo ameweza kudhihirika hata uh, tunaona yule mnyama akiwa na vichwa saba kwa hivyo ni tafsiri nyingine pia ya kuweza kuelewa mwanamke kuwa mekalia milima saba ambayo milima katika maandiko pia ni ishara ya falme. Thank you. Back to you, Elder. Good. Now, those are the seven mountains which are all seven kingdoms constituted in one upon which she sits. All of the kingdoms of the world will come together. From all of the ages, from the days of Daniel right down to our days, in one kingdom. But when she says, when it says she, she, she sits upon waters, notice what John says. John says in Revelation 17, verse 15, and he said unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and towns. You know what this means? This means that the masses of peoples in the world will be those who support and advance the work of the woman, the work of the harlot of Revelation 17. It means that the woman is in control of the masses. Karuga. Amen. Basi, tunapo endelea. Uh, tumeweza kuona kwamba milima ni inawakilisha falme ambazo mwanamke yule ameweza kukalia na tumeweza kuona picha ambayo inaeleshwa 
falme zote zikiweza kudhihirishwa katika mnyama yule mmoja. Lakini pia kuna tafsiri nyingine ambayo naona yule mwanamke amekalia maji mengi. Na unaposoma katika kitabu cha Funuo 17 mstari wake ni wa 15 basi inasema kisha akaniambia yale maji uliyoyaona hapo aketipo yule kahaba ni jamaa na makutano na mataifa na lugha. Kwa hivyo ni wanadamu katika mataifa tofauti tofauti. Kwa hivyo watu katika ulimwengu wataweza kumpa nguvu yule mwanamke na wataweza kuunga mkono kazi ambayo yule mwanamke anafanya katika dunia hii. Na kwa hivyo mwanamke anatawala wanadamu na yani katika ile njia anaonekana amekalia maji mengi ni kumaanisha wanadamu wanaunga mkono kazi ambayo yule mwanamke anafanya. Back to you elder. Good. So the question is how does she control the masses of the people in the world how does she receive the support from all of the peoples in the world i want for us to look at what isaiah has to say concerning waters in in isaiah chapter 8 verse 12 isaiah 8 verse, verse. 7 rather isaiah 8 verse 7 it says now therefore behold the Lord bringeth up upon them the rivers, the waters of the river, strong and many. Notice it now. Even the king of Assyria and all his glory, he shall come up over all his channels and go over all his banks. So, Waters then re represent people as represented by their rulers and their armies. The people are represented by their rulers and by their armies. This is how she controls the masses. Karuga. Amen. Amen. Basi tunapoendelea na tumaia kwamba kuna mambo unazidi na kujifunza. Tumeweza kuona mwanamke amekalia maji mengi na tumeweza kuona maji ni lugha ni watu wengi katika lugha tofauti katika mataifa tofauti. Lakini ni kwa nje ipi ambayo mwanamke hivi kaeo maji ya huo mto yenye nguvu mengi sana nayo ni mfalme wa Ashuru na utukufu wake wote naye atakuja na kupita juu ya mifereji yake yote atafurika juu ya kingo zake zote kwa hivyo maji basi ni wakati watu ama inawakilisha watu wanapokuwa wakiwakilishwa na viongozi wao na pia na majeshi yao Kwa hivyo viongozi ambao wanatawala watu na majeshi ambayo inashikilia ama inatawala mataifa tofauti tofauti ni kwa njia hiyo wanamke viongozi wao kupitia kwa majeshi yao amen indeed it's a powerful point back to you elder okay it seems as though you're having some problems some challenges with your bandwidth especially when you put on your video now the apostle okay. john Excuse me, Elder. Yes, it seems as though uh, you are having some let problems me, let with your family. Let me leave for some moment and then I come back. Yeah, yes. yeah. Let, let me let me switch off and then I come back again, so you can, can continue and then I'll pick up from where you. Yes. Be. Right. Okay. Good. So the point that was made just now is this: in Revelation seventeen, verse fifteen. The waters upon which the horse sitteth represent peoples and nations and multitudes and tongues. So this means that sitting upon the people means that the woman is controlling the masses, the people, and the people 
are giving her their support. But the question is, how does the people give that support? As we saw in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 7, concerning the water of the river, the water of the river, strong. And uh, it mentions the king of Assyria, which is really the king of Babylon. And all his glory, all his glory would represent his entire army. And it says he shall come and overflow uh, all his channels and go over all his banks. And we note this, waters upon which she sits then would not only represent merely the people as individuals, but it would represent the people as under a governmental structure. It would represent the people whose rulers will then be given the support to false protestant to the woman. So the woman would receive the support from the leaders of the people and the armies of the people will be enforcing the woman's mandates. That is the very important point to note. That is critical to understand. Now, John himself also speaks about the dragon's use of power, of water, the dragon's use of water. He says in Revelation chapter 12, verse 15. Revelation 12, verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Now, those who are with us as we looked at Revelation chapter 12, you would remember that we had established that though waters represent people, it does not mean that a dragon was casting people out of his mouth. You would remember that it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. So what is in the heart comes out of the mouth. And the question is, what comes out, what is it that comes out of Satan's heart? What is it? That desire to take liberty away from people. But that desire to take people, liberty away from people, especially those who serve God, that is framed into legislation. It is framed into laws so that that is how the peoples of the world are involved in advancing the work of Satan and his representative, the papacy. So I don't know if, I don't know if, um, Karuga Kate, are you back? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me let me just try and fix something. Okay. Okay, just a minute. So it is important to understand that the people speak through their legislation. So though it says, let me put it there for you again. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 15, and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And water there, it is not people coming out of the serpent's mouth. What comes out of the serpent's mouth are those things that are in his heart. And that is the desire to take away liberty. And that is framed into legislation by the people who seek through legislation to take the liberty away from the people of God. Karuga, you're with me again? 
yes yes now i'm back uh thank i hope you can hear me clearly yes okay okay kwa hivyo basi tunapokuwa tukiendelea mahali ambapo nimeweza uh, kukutilia tunapoendelea tunakuja kuona Yohana pia anazungumza kuhusiana na jinsi joka uh, anavyotoa maji tunaambiwa pale katika ukunuo 12 mstari wake ni wa 15 kwamba nyoka akatoa katika kinywa chake nyuma ya huyo mwanamke maji kama mto amfache amfanye kuchukuliwa na mto ule kwa hivyo basi tunapoangalia mto jinsi ambavyo umeweza kutumika pale uh, kumbuka watu huwa wanazungumza ama wanatekeleza mambo kupitia kwa sheria ambazo zinapitishwa na kwa hivyo uh, sio uh, katika hali ya kuweza kubuni sheria ambazo zinaweza kuondoa uhuru wa watu basi ndipo sasa tunakuja kuona picha ile ambayo ikiweza kuelezewa pale kuhusiana na joka akiweza kutoa maji yani ni kupitia kwa sheria ambazo zina, zinatungwa na pia majeshi ya watu ikiweza kuendea watu wa Mungu na kuweza uh, kuwatesa na basi tunapokuwa tukiendelea tunaweza kuelewa zaidi back to you elder good so See if you can join me for a minute. Okay. Now this is very important. What comes out of the heart of the serpent is spoken into the minds and consciences of the people. Ya kwamba kile ambacho kinatoka katika moyo basi kinaweza kuzungumzwa katika dhamira za watu the thoughts that the people receive from the serpent is framed into legislation na basi mawazo ambayo watu wanapokea kupitia kwa yule joka zinabuniwa na zinawekwa katika sheria it is the governing entity that form legislation to carry away the people of god na ni mamlaka ambayo anatawala ndipo huwa anabuni hizi sheria ambazo sasa zinaondolea watu wa Mungu. Therefore the beast of Revelation 17 is an organized worldly body religious body worldly driven by legislation to take freedom away from the world. Kwa hivyo mnyama wa ufuno 17 ni kundi la dini ambalo ni la ulimwama la dunia yote ama ulimwengu wote ambao linatoa ama linabuni sheria ambazo zinaenda kinyume na watu na watu wa Mungu. Good. So I want for us now to see the whore's support is the legislation of the people. Revelation chapter 13 verse 14 And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live so notice it a saw is mentioned to the people through their governing entity that they through legislation should make an image to the beast which had a wound by a sword and still lives so notice that the beast of revelation 13 one of his heads had been wounded that is the people wound refer to as the beast of revelation 13:1 and the peoples of the earth are called upon to make a legislation or make a law to resemble the beast of revelation 13:1 which really is the horror of revelation 17 i don't know if you get all of that karuga okay okay thank you so much basi tunapoendelea Uh, basi kile ambacho kinashikilia yule kahaba 
ni sheria ambazo zinatungwa na watu na picha hii tunaiona vizuri pale katika kunuo 13 mstari wake ni wa 14 ambao tunaambiwa kwamba naye awakosesha wale wakao juu ya nchi kwa ishara zile alizopewa kuzifanya mbele ya huyo mnyama akiwaambia wakao juu ya nchi kumfanyia sanamu yule mnyama aliyekuwa na jeraha la upanga naye akaishi kumbuka ya kwamba mnyama huyu ambaye anazungumziwa hapa ni mnyama wa ufunuo wa kwanza wa kitabu cha ufunuo 13 ambaye aliweza kupokea jeraha na kumbuka tuliweza kuangalia kichwa hicho ambacho kilipokea jeraha ni upapa sasa kupitia kwa wanadamu kupitia kwa watu sheria itaweza kubuniwa ambayo inafanana na yule papa ama sheria ambayo inampa mamlaka uh, utawala ule na ukumbuke mnyama wa pili wa ufunuo 13 ndiye mnyama ambao tunaona katika ukunuo 17. Kwa hivyo ni kupitia kwa sheria ambazo zitaweza kutolewa ndipo basi itaweza uh, kuwa sheria ambazo zinagandamiza kama vile tu yule mnyama alivyokuwa akitawala. Back to you elder. Good. Now it is at this time that there is uh, the rising tide of the horse popularity in the world today it is happening at this time it is like the swelling of the ocean or high tide and uh, the water is becoming full jeremiah speaks of the swelling of the jordan in jeremiah chapter 49 verse 19 he says behold he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of jordan against the inhabitant habitation of the strong so you have the swelling of jordan make that point and then we will elaborate on it a little more okay okay kwa hivyo tunaendelea kuona ya kwamba uh, ni katika wakati huu ndipo yale mawimbi ya yule kahaba yanaendelea kufurika kwa hivyo usaidizi ama uwezo ambao yule mwanamke anaendelea kupokea sasa hivi anaupokea zaidi yani kwa njia hiyo mawimbi yanaendelea na kufurika ndipo sasa Yeremia anatuambia pale katika Jeremia 49 mstari wa 19 anasema angalia atapanda kamba simba toka kiburi cha Yordani juu ya malisho yasiyo nyauka ama atapanda kama simba toka kufurika kwa Yordani kwa hivyo ni katika wakati huu mwanamke yule anaendelea na kupata kuungwa mkono zaidi Yordani inaendelea na kufurika back to you Ellen So the swelling support and popularity Babylon is now receiving it and I want for us to remember that Israel crossed Jordan when Jordan was overflowing its banks. Karuga. Amen. Amen. Basi tunapoendelea uh, wakati huu ndipo Babeli inaendelea na kupokea msaada na kuungwa mkono zaidi na maji yanaendelea na kufurika. Lakini kumbuka ni wakati maji ya Yordani yalipokuwa yamefurika ndipo Israeli waliweza kuvuka Jordan. Amen. Amen. So Israel crossed Jordan when Jordan was overflowing its banks and now the the Jordan is coming to a place where its banks again spiritually are being overflown. It is not going to be easy during these times. Jeremiah chapter 12 verse 5 says If thou hast run with the footmen and they have buried thee then how canst thou contend with horses and if in the land of beast where thou trustest they are very thee then how will thou do in the swelling of Jordan so Jordan will be swelling again but this is spiritually speaking and if you can handle the things that are happening now what will happen when the papacy has received 
the support from all of the peoples of the world through their governmental systems. Karuga. Amen. Basi tunapokuwa tukiendelea. Kumbuka Yordani inaendelea na kufurika. Babeli inaendelea na kupokea kuungwa mkono na msaada kutoka kwa watu. Lakini Israeli iliweza kuvuka Yordani wakati ilipokuwa imefurika. Lakini hata hivyo haitakuwa ni mambo rahisi. Na kumbuka tunapoangalia sasa katika kufurika kwa Yordani katika kiroho, basi tunaona mambo haya yanaendelea. Tunaambiwa hivi katika Yeremia 12 mstari wa 5. Ikiwa umepiga mbio pamoja na hao waendao kwa miguu nao wamekuchosha, basi wawezaje kushindana na farasi? Na unajapokuwa katika nchi ya mani u salama, lakini utafanyaje hapo katika kiburi au kufurika kwa Yordani? Kwa hivyo ikiwa katika wakati huu hawezi kustahimili mambo ambayo yanaendelea sasa hivi je itakuwaje wakati upapa utakuwa umepokea mamlaka yote umepokea msaada wote kupitia kwa serikali za wanadamu na itaweza kuipatia mamlaka itakuwaje kwako wakati huo Yordan itakapokuwa imefurika itakuwaje wakati huo ambapo upapa utakuwa umepokea mamlaka na umeungwa mkono na serikali zote katika dunia hii ikiwa mambo madogo yanatulemea sasa hivi je itakuwaje katika wakati huo back to you Ella. good so god made a path through jordan for israel and the bible tells us that the waters that are swelling at this time which is the popularity given to the papacy that water will be dried up also Karuga. amen amen basi wapendo tunaambiwa kwamba Kumbuka Mungu alitengeneza njia kupita katika Yordani ili watu wake waweze kuvuka. Na basi hata katika wakati huu maandiko inakuja kutuonesha kwamba maji yale yataweza kukauka. Amen. Amen. That drying up of the water was typified in the fall of ancient Babylon. Notice what Isaiah says regarding Cyrus's conquest of Babylon that says to the deep be dry and I will dry up the rivers so this is very important the papacy is receiving its popularity in the rising tide from the world by God has given us the assurance even from the fall of ancient babylon that modern mystical babylon will also lose its support the waters will be dried up praise the lord amen amen wapendwa basi tunakuja kuona ya kwamba kama vile tu babeli ya awali ilivyoweza kuangushwa kupitia kwa maji kuweza kukauka basi hivyo hivyo pia mfano huu umetolewa ili kutuhakikishia kwamba licha kwamba Yordani inaendelea kufurika licha kwamba upapa unaendelea kupokea mamlaka unaendelea kupata nguvu lakini yale maji yataweza kukauka tunaambiwa hivi na nabii Isaya Isaya 44 mstari wa 27 kwamba niviambiaje aniviambie vilindi kauka nami nitaikausha mito yako kwa hivyo Mungu ametuhakikishia ya kwamba hata babeli ya siku ya leo ya kiroho pia nayo kuna wakati inafika itapoteza mamlaka hayo yote itapoteza kuungwa mkono huko itapoteza support yote ambayo inaweza inapokea sasa hivi kupitia kwa watu na kupitia kwa serikali hivi karibuni wapendwa babeli itapoteza support hiyo yote itapoteza mamlaka hayo yote maji yatakauka amen amen good So the strength of Babylon listen to it the strength of Babylon was its most vulnerable point this was the case of literal historical Babylon this will also happen with spiritual mystical Babylon its strength which is the support of the people will be its most 
vulnerable point. Amen. Amen. No apendo nguvu ya Babeli. Mahali Babeli lipokuwa na nguvu hapo ndipo unyonge wake ulikuwa. Na basi hivyo hivyo hata katika Babeli ya wakati huu. Mahali ambapo imepata nguvu katika point hiyo ambayo inapata nguvu hapo hapo ndipo unyonge wake unatokea pia. Amen. Amen. Now John mentions this under plague 6. Revelation 16 verse 12. He says, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. Remember Euphrates? Anciently was the river that protected and supplied support to Babylon. But this is not literal Euphrates because we are not dealing with literal Babylon. So this Euphrates is a spiritual Euphrates. This is the peoples of the world. And it says, and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So look at it as ancient Babylon was overthrown by Cyrus in that Cyrus dried up the waters to make way for the king of the east to enter in. So also in our day, mystical Babylon will fall because something will happen that will cause the support of the people to be withdrawn from the system. That is the drying up of the river Euphrates and it will collapse. Karuga. Amen. Amen. Wapendo tunapo endelea. Abasi kama vile. Meza kuna ya kwamba. Mahali babeli lipo kuwa na nguvu. Hapo ndipo unyonge wake ulikuwa. Na kama babeli ya kitambo. Ambayo ilikuwa na mto frati. Ambayo ndo ilikuwa wanapokea. Msada wao wote pale. Ndiyo walikuwa na tumiale maji katika kilimo. Katika mambo yote ambayo walikuwa nafanya. Basi hapo ndipo unyonge wao ulikuwa pia. Maana ili uh, uh, Saira saweze kushinda babeli, ilibidi aeze kugeuza maji ya ule mto, yani kwa njia nyingine kuyakausha, na wakapata njia ya kweza kuingia. Na basi pia kwa hukua huku kwa babeli ya kiroho, inelezoa katika pigo la sita, ambao tunambiwa hivi katika kitabu cha ukunuo kumina sita, mstari wa kumina mbili, kwamba na huyo wa sita, akakimimina kitasa chake juu ya mto ule mkubwa frati, Maji yake ya kakauka. Kumbuka hatuzungumzi kuhusu babe ama mtofrati wa kuonekana. Sasa ni mtofrati wa kiroho ambao ni watu wa ulimwengu huu ambao ameweza kumpa babeli msaada wao <coughs> na kumuunga mkono lakini yataweza kukauka. Basi kuna jambo ambalo litafanyika ili ya kwamba watu waweze kuondoa msaada wao waweze kuondoa kule kuunga mkono. Ni nini hicho ambacho kitafanyika kitasababisha mtofrati kuweza kukauka? Back to you elder. Okay. Good. That is very important. Now. The question that can be asked is this. Why did the people give their support to the woman? In the first place. Basi, swali ambalo lineza kuulizwa ni hili. Ni nini hicho kilisababisha watu kuunga mkono yule mwanamke hapo mwanzo? Ni nini hicho kilisababisha serikali watu kweza kuunga mkono huyu mwanamke hapo mwanzo? Good. John answers that question and says that the support came because the people were deceived. Notice what he says. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So it is through deception and miracle working power 
which deceive them as a matter of fact. This will cause them to give their, their support and help and even their power to the woman. Amen. Basi, swali, ni nini hicho kili sababisha watu kweza kuunga mkono yule mwanamke hapo mwanzo? Basi, kilicho sababisha waeze kumunga mkono ni kwa sababu ya upotovu ama kudanganywa. Na tunambiwa hivi pale katika ufunuo kuminatisa, msari, kuminambili msari watisa, yule joka akatupwa, yule mkubwa, nyoka wa zamani, aitwaye ibilisi na shetani, au danganyae ulimwengu wote, akatupwa hata inchi, na malaika zake wakatupwa pamoja nae. Kwa hivyo ni kupitia kwa udanganyifu, ni kupitia kwa upotovu, ni kupitia kwa hila, ndipo ulimwengu wote uliweza kudanganywa kupitia kwa miujiza ya uongo kupitia kwa ishara na maajabu dunia ikaweza kudanganyika na wakaweza kuunga mkono yule mwanamke back to you elder good now remember the people are the ones who are deceived but it won't for us now to see who were the ones especially targeted by this deception did she go directly to the people who was it that were the special targets of the enemy to deceive them listen to what john says in revelation 16 revelation 16 from verse 13 and i saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles. Notice what they're doing. Which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God almighty. So, it will be the kings, the presidents, the governors of the earth that will be the special targets of deception, which therefore will cause the entire world to be deceived. And these are represented as the beast, who are the governing bodies, and the waters, who are all of the people. So the people are governed by the beast. The beast is the governing body over the people and the woman will be riding the beast. The woman will be riding the governing entity that lead the people. Amen. Turgen. Amen. Interesting. Wapendo basi tunapo endelea. Uh, ni kweli ulimwengu wote uleza kudanganyika. Wanadamu waleza kudanganyika. Lakini udanganyika huu sana sana ulikuna lenga kina nani? Ni nani hawa ambayo tetani alikuwa anataka kuweza kudanganya katika kupitia kwa miujiza hii na kupitia kwa maajabu na ishara ambazo zitaweza kufanywa. Tunaambiwa hivi katika ufunuo 16 mstari wake ni wa 13. Nikaona roho tatu za uchafu zilizofanana na viura zikitoka katika kinywa cha yule joka na katika kinywa cha yule mnyama na katika kinywa cha yule nabii wa uongo. Hizo ndizo roho za mashetani, zifanyazo ishara, zitokazo na kuendea wafalme woli mwengu wote kwa kusanya kwa vita ya siku ile kuu ya mungu mwenyezi. Kwa hivyo, wanao lengwa sana ni wafalme, yani viongozi. Na ni kupitia kwa wale ambao wanaongoza, kupitia kwa wale ambao wanatawala, hao ndiyo shetani analenga sana. Maana kishika hao, basi ya meza kushika ulimwengu ama wanadamu wote. Na basi ndiposa ile picha inaletwa katika ufunuo 17, mwanamke amekalia mnyama. Mnyama ni serikali, ni viongozi ambao wanatawala system hii yote, basi wao wakeza kudanganyika, kupitia kwa ishara hizi, kupitia kwa miujiza hii, basi itakuwa ni raisi pia kuweza kushika wanadamu wengine. Amen. Thank you for that point elder back to you. Good. This you can refer to this as Unity in deception. Yes? 
yeah kwamba hii oh, tunaona yeah, kwamba ni okay ya kwamba hii ni umoja lakini umoja katika udanganyifu ni umoja ambao uh, ni watu ambao ambao wameweza kudanganyika however there will come a time when that deception will be broken lakini wapendwa kunao wakati ambao unakuja ambapo udanganyifu huo utaweza kuvunjika amen the question is what will break the deception what will cause the people and the rulers of the world to recognize that they have been deceived basi swali kuu ambao tutajiuliza ni nini hicho ambacho kitasababisha udanganyifu huu kuweza kuvunjika ni nini hicho kitasababisha wafalme na viongozi wa ulimwengu huu wakuje kutambua kwamba walikuwa wamedanganywa ni nini hicho the only thing that is capable of breaking such a deep deception that came about because of miracles is the work of Jesus Christ in giving the truth to the world amen ya kwamba kile tu ambacho kinaweza sababisha udanganyifu huu uweze kuvunjika ni Yesu Kristo na kupitia kwa ukweli ambao anatoa basi ukweli huo ndio utaweza kusababisha watu kutambua kweli wamekuwa wamedanganywa amen notice what the bible tells us in revelation 18 it says and after these things i saw another angel come down from heaven having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory praise the lord and he carried and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying babylon the great is fallen is fallen and has become the habitation of devils and a hole of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird it is the work of christ in revealing his glory through his people that will cause the people of the world to recognize that they have been deceived karuga amen amen basi wapendwa tumeza kuwa nani kazi tu ya kristo katika kudhirisha kweli ndio peke yake ambayo inaweza sababisha watu kuweza kuelewa na kuweza kuona kweli wamekuwa wamedanganywa tunaambiwa hivi katika kitabu cha funuo 18 mstari wa kwanza ujumbe wa wakati huu wapendwa baada ya hayo naliona malaika mwingine akishuka kutoka mbinguni mwenye mamlaka kuu na inchi ama kwa lugha nyingine na dunia yote ikaangazwa kwa utukufu wake akalia kwa sauti kuu akisema umeanguka umeanguka babeli ule mkuu umekuwa maskani ya mashetani na ngome ya kila roho mchafu na ngome ya kila ndege uh, samahani na ngome ya kila ndege mchafu mwenye kuchukiza. Kwa hivyo wapendwa, ni kupitia kwa kazi ya Kristo katika kuweza kunua tabia yake, kupitia kwa watu wake. Hii ndiyo itaweza kusababisha walimwengu kuweza kutambua wameweza kudanganyika. Hii ndiyo itavunja huo udanganyifu ambao Babeli imeweza kuwa imeshika wanadamu nao hasa viongozi na kupitia kwa kukunuliwa kwa tabia ya Mungu kufunuliwa kwa utukufu wa Mungu kupitia kwa watu wake hii ndio itasababisha watu kufunguka macho na kuona kweli tumekuwa tumedanganywa wakati huu wote amen amen good so it is the glory of god that fills the earth making it clear making all of the issues in a great controversy clear to every soul kwa hivyo ni kuweza kufunuliwa kwa utukufu wa Mungu ama kwa tabia ya Mungu katika ulimwengu wote ndio itaweza kusababisha kuweka mambo wazi mambo haya yote yataweza kuwekwa wazi na watu wote wataweza kujaelewa amen satan will be leading his whole confederacy of evil angels and evil systems and men on earth 
under deception, deceiving the whole world. Yes. Ya kwamba shetani atakuwa anaongoza majeshi yake na pia kuweza kudanganya walimwengu kupitia kwa uh, upotovu kupitia kwa uh, miujiza hii ya uongo shetani naye atakuwa anaongoza watu wake na jeshi lake lote but christ praise the lord is leading his people who are representatives of the government and principles of heaven declaring the glory of god the character of god which will dispel the darkness of the devil and bring down Babylon praise the lord amen lakini naye kristo anaongoza watu wake ambao wanadhihirisha tabia yake wanadhihirisha utukufu wake na hawa wateza kuvunja chini ngome hiyo ya shetani na serikali ya shetani amen amen praise god it is the revelation of christ's glory that will bind satan we are told in Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20 from verse 1. And I saw another angel come down from heaven. This is Christ himself. Having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Christ is in control now. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him where into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he shall deceive the nations no more till the thousand years shall be fulfilled and after that he shall be loose a little season karuga amen amen basi wapendwa tunapokuwa tukiendelea utukufu wa Mungu unaodhihirishwa kupitia kwa watu wake ndio itaweza ku funga shetani. Tunaambiwa katika ufunuo 20 mstari wa kwanza. Kisha nikaona malaika akishuka kutoka binguni, mwenye ufunguo wa kuzimu na mnyororo mkubwa mkononi mwake. Akamshika yule joka, yule joka wa zamani ambaye ni ibilisi na shetani, akamfunga miaka elfu. Akamtupa katika kuzimu, akamfunga, akatia muhuri juu yake, asipate kuwadanganya mataifa tena hata ile miaka elfu itimie na baada ya hayo yapaswa afunguliwe muda mchache kwa hivyo kupitia kwa utukufu wa Mungu kudhihirishwa kupitia kwa watu wake katika kizazi hichi cha mwisho hakika kitasababisha hata shetani mwenyewe kuweza kufungwa asiweze kudanganya tena ulimwengu amen amen so those who are praising satan unconsciously and praising Satan's system, they will come to recognize that they were deceived and they will turn on him and on his representatives. We are told in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 17, thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee all they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shall be a terror, and never shall thou be any more. So, though Satan has his way now, the Bible has forecasted that there will come a time when he is no more. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Basi wapendo tunapo endelea. Tunakuja kwa nea kwamba, licha kwamba siku ya leo, Wanadamu wanazidi na kumsifu shetani na kumunga mkono. Lakini ipo wakati ambapo inakuja na ni hivi karibuni. Ambapo macho yaya watafunguliwa, wataacha, wataeza kuelewa vizuri na basi wataeza kumgeukia. Na picha hii tunaletewa pale katika kitabu cha Ezekieli 28 mstari wa 17. Ambapo inasema moyo wako uliinuka kwa sababu ya uzuri wako. Umeiharibu hekima yako kwa sababu ya muangaza wako. Nimekutupa chini. Nimekulaza mbele ya wafalme wapate kukutazama. Wote wakujuao kati ya kabila za watu watakustaajabia. Umekuwa kitu cha kutisha wala hautakuwapo tena hata milele. Kwa hivyo licha kwamba shetani wakati huu anaweza kudanganya wengi lakini ipo wakati ambapo wataweza kufunguka macho 
wataweza kupata ukujua ukweli na kuona wamedanganywa na basi pia wataweza kumgeukia amen good now isaiah mentions this also notice what isaiah says in isaiah 14 verses, verses 15 and 16 yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee saying is this the man that made the earth to tremble that did shake kingdoms so notice that the world will narrowly look upon him they are now undeceived and they are seeing him in his true light they're recognizing that he is not what he professed to be. Amen. Amen. Wapendo pia Nabi Isaya ameza kuzungumzia maneno hayo. Mbaipo anatuambia katika Isaya 14, msari wa 15. Lakini utashushwa mpaka kuzimu. Mpaka pande za mwisho za shimo. Wa wakuonao watakukazia macho. Watakuangalia sana wakisema. Je, huyu ndiye alia tetemesha dunia. Uyu ndiye alie tikisa falme. Kwa hivyo, wa, walimwengu watakuja kufunguka macho na wateza kuona kweli, wateza kumona shetani katika rangi yake jinsi ilivyo. Na wakuja kuona kweli, yeye sio vile walidhania. Na wateza kufunguka macho na kuona ukweli. Amina. Amen. Good. Now, the question is, who will be responsible for this destruction? Who will be the ones responsible for the destruction of those who are the primary support of uh, Satan's kingdom? Who will be responsible for the destruction of the harlot? Revelation 17, verse 16. Revelation 17, verse 16. It says, and the ten horns. Remember the ten horns? are the ten kingdoms. They are political Protestant kingdoms. They are kingdoms that are based upon Protestant principles that were deceived. The ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, thee shall hate the whore. I shall make her desolate and naked. I shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Karuga. Amen. Amen. Basi, niakina nani hawa? Wateza kusika katika kweza kumuangamiza huyu kahaba ambaye amekuwa amewadanganya. Basi tunambiwa pale katika kunuo kumina saba mstari wake ni wa kumina sita. Na zile pembe kumi ulizo ziona na huyo mnyama hao watamchukia yule kahaba na watamfanya kuwa mkiwa na uti. Watamla nyama yake watamteketeza kabisa kwa moto. Kumbuka Pembe kumi kama vile tuleza kuangalia ni falme zile ambazo msingi wake ulianzia ukiwa kiprotestanti. Ni falme kumi ambazo uh, basi tumeza, tuleza kuwana ni falme kumi ambazo upapo uleza kugawanyika ama utawalu la kurumi uleza kugawanyika. Falme ambazo zilikuwa na msingi wa kiprotestanti na kama tuli vile tuliangalia kumi katika unabi ni hesabu ambayo inaonesha ujumla kwa hivyo ni ujumla wa mataifa yote ambayo yako na misingi ya uprotestanti. Hawa ndiyo wateza kumgeukia yule mwanamke na kweza kumuangamiza. Amen. Good. So notice it is the horns of the beast that will destroy the whore. The horns give their power to the beast and the beast supports the whore. The horns are the political powers that give their power to Protestantism, which give its power to the whore. Made that point before we wrap it up. Okay, kwa hivyo, kumbuka ya kwamba ni zile pembe ambazo ziko katika mnyama, ndiyo zinaangamiza mwanamke. Kwa hivyo, zile pembe, yani mataifa yale, yali unga mkono mnyama, ili aeze kumshika mkono mwanamke. Na basi mataifa haya haya ndiyo ya teza kusika katika kweza kumuangamiza yule mwanamke. Thank you. Now, listen carefully. The one that gave the people, the entities that gave their power
power to the whore will withdraw their power from her and then turn on her with rage. Mm -hmm. Kumbuka ya kwamba basi wale ambao walikuwa wameunga mkono yule kahaba na kuweza kumpatia uwezo wataweza kuondoa ule msaada wao na kisha wamgeukie huyo mwanamke. Amen. Say with me a minute. Okay. Therefore you would remember that ancient Israel used the Romans to come against Christ and his people then the Romans in turn destroyed ancient Israel. Utakumbuka ya kwamba Israeli ya kitambo walieza kuunga mkono serikali ya kirumi ili kuweza kuenda na kumpiga kristo pamoja sana wanafunzi wake. Lakini baadae serikali hiyo ya kirumi ili geukia wa Israeli na kuweza kuangamiza. Secondly, you will see that it was the governments of Europe, especially France, that gave their support to the papacy. You will hear about the St. Bartholomew massacre. And eventually, it is the powers, especially France, that turn around and destroy the papacy. Utakumbuka pia katika utawala upapa mataifa ya kule Europa yaleza kuunga mkono hasa taifa la Kifaransa katika kuweza ku, uh, kumpa msaada upapa. Unakumbuka pia kulingana na mawaji yaliofanyika kule uh, 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 St. Bartholomew. Lakini nakuja kuwa na kwamba baadae hayo mataifa ya kiongozwa pia na Ufaransa Dio yaligeukia upapa na kuweza kuipatia jeraha la mauti. And the principle is the very same in these days. The ones that give the whore their power, they will turn around and destroy the whore with that power. Na msingi ni ule ule. Hao ambao wamempatia kahaba mamlaka na nguvu zao, wateza kuondoa nguvu zao na kugeukia huyu kahaba na kwa hizo nguvu tu waweze kumwangamiza amen none of god's people will be involved in the destruction of the wicked hakuna yoyote wa kati ya watu wa mungu watahusika katika kuangamizwa kwa waovu those who believe that god's angels or God's people will be involved in the destruction of wicked people, whether they are in the Seventh-day Adventist Church or in other churches. They are preaching false doctrine. It is a doctrine of the devil. Wale ambao wanafundisha, eti ni malaika wa mungu ama watu wa mungu ambao wateza kuangamiza wali mwengu ama watu ingine, either ni katika the hebu laki adventista, Basi watu kama wale wanafundisha mafundisho ya uongo na ni mafundisho ya kishetani. Neither God nor his people will be involved in killing those who are wicked. Make that point again. Ya kwamba sio mungu wala sio watu wake watausika katika kuangamiza waovu. Amen. Now, E.G. White makes a statement as we seek to come down to our close. Notice this statement. Notice it. It is because the four angels are holding the four winds that they shall not blow upon the earth. But human passions are reaching a high pass and the spirit of the Lord is being what? Withdrawn from the earth. Were it not that God has commanded angelic agencies to control the satanic agencies that are seeking to break loose and to destroy, there will be no hope, but the winds are to be held until the servants of God are sealed in their foreheads. So notice that God is keeping back satanic agencies from doing a work of destruction 
It is not God, nor his people who do the work of destruction. Amen. Amen. Tunambiwa hivi basi katika roho nabi, kitabu cha heavenly places, ukuraso wa tisaini na sita, aya yake ni atatu. Ni kwa sababu wale malaika wanne, wanashikilia zile pepo nne, ili zisivume juu ya inti. Lakini, tamaa za wanadamu, zinafikia kiwango cha juu, zinafikia kiwango cha juu, na roho wabwana anaondolewa duniani. Kama si kwamba mungu ameamuru mashirika ya kimalaika, Kudhibiti mashirika ya kishetani ambayo yanatafuta kusambaratika na kuharibu apange kuwa na tumaini lakini pepo hizo zinapaswa kuziliwa hadi watumishi wa Mungu watakapotiwa muhuri kwenye vipaji vya nyuso zao kwa hivyo si Mungu anahusika katika kuangamiza wala sio watu wake ha, Mungu kupitia kwa malaika zake anashikilia hizo pepo ambazo ni tamaa za wanadamu zisifike mahali kabla ya watu wa Mungu kupitia mhuri katika vipaji vya nyuso zao amen good so ezekiel also saw this slaughter that will occur in the last days the slaughter of satan's people notice what he says in ezekiel 9 and the lord said unto him go through the midst of the city through the midst of jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that say and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So you have those who the, the angel with the ink horn that will, which is the sealing angel of Revelation chapter 7. May that point. Kwa hivyo, pia Ezekieli aneza kuelezea swala hili ama tukio hili. Na nalelezea pale katika kitabu cha Ezekieli 9 mstari wa 4. Bwana akamwambia, "Pita kati ya mji, kati ya Yerusalemu, ukatie alama katika vipaji vya nyuso vya watu wanaogua na kulia kwa sababu ya machukizo yote yanayofanyika kati yake." Back to you, Elder. Notice, it says now in verses 5 and 6, "And to the others he said in mine hearing, go ye after him through the city." And smite, let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. Listen carefully. These are the angels of Revelation 7. Who are holding the winds, preventing the winds from blowing. But when they release, satanic agencies will be unleashed upon this earth. So these angels with the slaughter weapons, they are not the ones who are doing the work of destruction. They are releasing destroying agencies, and it is Satan and his destroying agencies that will bring destruction upon this world amen Karuga. amen tunapo kuwa tukiendelea tunaambiwa mstari wa 5 na hao wengine aliwaambia nami nilisikia iteni kati ya mji nyuma yake mkapige jicho lenyu lisiachilie wala msione huruma waweni kabisa mzee na kijana na msichana na watoto wachanga na wanawake lakini msimskaribie mtu yoyote mwenye hiyo alama tena Anzeni katika patakatifu pangu. Basi wakanza na waze walio kuwa mbele ya nyumba. Kwa hivyo, malaika hawa ambao wanonekana katika kunuo kumina saba, wanashikilia zile pepo zisivume. Watakapo, kuwa, watakapo yachilia, basi tuteza kuona kazi ya shetani, akieza kuangamiza, akiwa me, amiachiliwa huru kutekeleza kazi yake ya kuangamiza. Si malaika wa mungu huwa wanaangamiza, wala si mungu wala si watu wake ni wakati ulinzi unapokuwa umeondolewa basi ndipo ule shetani anafanya maangamizi na anaweza kutekeleza mambo haya yote ya uovu amen good so what is interesting to note here in that verse is that those who are foremost in deceiving the world will be first to fall i when he says begin at my sanctuary is he suggesting that the Seventh-day Adventist leadership 
will be foremost in persecuting the people of God and therefore the foremost in falling victim to this destruction? Very important question. Basi, tunakuja kuona pale wale ambao wamekuwa kipaumbele katika kudanganya watu ndio wataweza kuangamizwa kwanza. Na pale tunaambia kwamba anzia katika patakatifu mpango ama katika hekalu langu. Je, yawezekana hiyo inaelezea kuhusiana na viongozi wa kanisa la Adventista ambao kumbe ndio watakuwa wa kwanza ama watakuwa kipaumbele kuweza uh, kutesa watu wa Mungu na basi hao ndio watakuwa wa kwanza pia kuweza uh, kuangamizwa kupitia kwa hali hii ambayo tunaona hapa yawezekana ni hivyo back to you elder Ellen G White places this slaughter down during the period of the sixth and seventh plague just before the coming of Christ. Made that point. Um, to Mishwa Mungu Dada White and Elezea to Kyohili, Liki Panika, Katika, Figolile La Sita and La Saba, Karibu Kweza Kufikia, Wakati Wamusho. This is taken from Great Controversy, six five six paragraph one. A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth, for the Lord hath a controversy with the nations. He will plead with all flesh. He will give them that are wicked to the sword. The question is, whose sword shall they be given to? For 6,000 years, the great controversy has been in progress. The Son of God and his heavenly messengers have been in conflict with the powers of the evil one to warn, enlighten, and to save the children of men. So notice in this here, it speaks about they're being given to the sword. The wicked are given to the sword. Whose sword? Karuga. Basi, tunambiwa hivi katika kitabu charayo nabi, Great Controversy, ukurasa wa miya sita, hamsini na sita, aya kwanza. Mshindo utapika hata mwisho wa dunia, Maana Bwana ana mashindano na mataifa. Atateta na watu wote wenye mwili na waovu atawatoa wauawe kwa upanga. Swali ni ni upanga upi? Kwa miaka elfu sita, pambano kuu limekuwa likiendelea. Mwana wa Mungu na wajumbe wake wa mbinguni wamepigana na nguvu za yule muovu ili kuonya, kuangazia na kuokoa wana wa wanadamu. Je, ni panga ipi hii ambayo Itaeza kuwaua, waovu. Back to you, Ella. Good. Now, notice again, the statement continues. Says, wait a minute. I think Okay. All right, good. Now all have made their decision. Notice it. This is after probation is closed. The wicked have fully united with Satan in his warfare against God. The time has come for God to vindicate the authority of his downtrodden law. Now the controversy is not alone with Satan, but with men. The Lord have a controversy with the nations. He will give them that are wicked to the sword. It is mentioned once again. So this is after probation is closed because all have made their decision. Karuga. Amen. Basi nukui napo kuwa ikiendelea. Pale katika ukurasa wa miya sita hamsini na sita ayakwanza anyasema. Sasa wote wamefanya uamuzi wao. Kwa hivyo hii inatule, inatuonesha kipindi hiki ni baada ya kufungwa kwa mlango wa rehema. Maana mlango wa rehema huo inafungwa baada ya wote kuwa wamefanya maamuzi yao. Inaendelea kusema waovu wameungana kikamilifu na shetani katika vita vyake dhidi ya Mungu. Wakati umefika kwa wakati umefika kwa Mungu kutetea mamlaka ya sheria yake iliyokandamizwa. Sasa pambano hilo haliko peke yake na shetani bali na wanadamu bwana ana mashindano na mataifa na waovu atawatoa wauawe kwa upanga kwa hivyo inarudiwa tena jambo hilo 
kuhusiana na upanga. Nakumbuka kisa hicho kinafanyika baada ya mlango wa rehema kufungwa maana kila mtu ashafanya uamuzi wake. Amen. Again, the mark of deliverance has been set upon those that say and that cry for all the abominations that be done. So this is a direct reference to Ezekiel chapter 9. Right down there in uh, during the sixth and seventh plague. Now the angel of death goes forth. Notice she says, now the angel of death goes forth, represented in Ezekiel's vision by the men with the slaughtering weapons to whom the command is given, slay utterly old and the young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. So she has taken Ezekiel 9 and placed it right after, it will be after general closure of probation, right down there just before the coming of Christ, when the people are undeceived. So you have a withdrawal of the support and a battle of Armageddon then will ensue, which will have to do with the Ezekiel's slaughter weapons. Amen. Amen. Nukubasi na puendelea tunambiwa hivi. Alama ya ukombozi imewekwa juu ya wale wanaugua na kulia kwa ajili ya machukizo yote yanayofanywa. Sasa, malaika wa kifo atoka, akiwakilishwa katika jozi ya ezekeli na wale wanaume wenye silaha za kuchinja, ambao kwao amri natolewa. Oweni kabisa wazee na vijana, na vijakazi na watoto wachanga na wanawake, lakini msimskaribie mtu yote, Aliye na hiyo alama na kuanzia na anzieni patakatika patakatifu pangu. Kwa hivyo, unaona ya kwamba tukio lile linaashiria ezekeli tisa ambao ni tukio ambao linafanyika baada ya mlango wa rehema kufungwa kabla ya kristo kurudi mara ya pili wakati ambapo watu wameza kufunguka macho watu wameza uh, kuona kweli wamekua, ki, wamekua medanganywa tukio hilo mtumishu wa mungu analiweka Katika wakati uo. Amen. The statement continues. Says the prophet, they began at the ancient men which were before the house. The work of destruction begins among those who have professed to be the spiritual guardians of the people. The false watchmen are the first to fall. These are none, they are none rather to pity or to spear. Men, women, maidens, little children perish together. What a work of destruction. This has absolutely nothing to do with the kingdom of God and the principles of his kingdom. This is the kingdoms of the world given over to themselves and they are self-destructing. Amen. Amen. Nukui kimalizia basi na tuambia. Asema nabi, walianza kwa waze walio mbele ya nyumba. Kazi ya waribifu huanza kati ya wale ambao wamedai kuwa walinzi wa kiroho wa watu. Walinzi wa uongo ndio wa kwanza kuanguka. Hakuna wakuahurumia wala wakuna wakuhurumia wala wakuahurumia. Wanaume, wanawake, wasichana na watoto wadogo kuangamia pamoja. Kwa hivyo haya yote hayana jambo lolote la kuhusiana na watu wa Mungu. Wala hayana jambo lolote la kuhusiana na serikali ya Mungu. Maana hii sio misingi ya serikali ya Mungu. Ni Mungu ateza kuacha waovu wenyewe waweze kuangamizana, wenyewe waweze uh, kumalizana baada ya wao kuweza kukundua kwamba wameza kudanganywa, wameza kuelo ukweli, wameza kufunguka macho basi wao kwa wao wanaangamizana na hiyo ndiyo picha ambayo tunaletwa pale katika Ezekiel 9. Amen. Ezekiel himself speaks about that self destruction in Ezekiel chapter 38 verse 21. He says, and I will call for a sword. We had heard about the sword earlier. I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, save the Lord. Listen to it now. Every Man's sword shall be against his brother. So we are seeing that it has also been prophesied 
that the sword that will come against the nations will be the sword of uh, every man against his brother. This has nothing to do with the people of God. Continue. Amen. Amen. No, apendo apia nabi Ezekieli. Bado amezungumza kusiana na upanga huu. Na hali hii ya watu wenyewe kuangamizana wao kwa wao. Anasema Ezekieli 38 mstari wa 21. Nami nitaita upanga uje juu yake katika milima yangu yote asema Bwana Mungu. Na upanga wa kila mtu utakuwa juu ya ndugu yake. Kwa hivyo upanga wa kila mtu utakuwa juu ya ndugu yake. Yaani ni kumaanisha Wenyewe kwa wenyewe wateza kuwana. Amen. Haggai himself. So not one prophet, not two prophets. Haggai was another prophet. And he prophesied concerning this event. And it will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. And it will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen. And it will overthrow the chariots. And those that ride in them. And the horses and their riders shall come down. Every one by the sword of his brother. Go ahead. Amen. Pia Nabi Hagai amezungumzia kusiana na tukio hili. Katika Hagai mbili, mstari wa 22 anasema. Nami nitakipindua kiti cha enzi cha falme. Nami nitaziharibu nguvu za falme za mataifa. Nami nitayapindua magari na hao wapandao ndani yake. Farasi na hao wapandao watanguka chini. Kila mtu kwa upanga wa ndugu yake. Amen. Praise God. And Daniel himself prophesied in Daniel chapter 7 verse 12. He says, I beheld and because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain. This is the beast of Revelation 17. This is also the beast of Revelation 13. This is also the dragon of Revelation 12. The body, that historic beast, was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flames. That burning flames is seen in Revelation chapter 20 as the second death. Amen. Amen. Na pia basi Yohana nae pia na malizia asamaani Danieli na tuambia katika Danieli saba kuminamoja. Nikatazama wakati huo kwa sababu ya sauti ya ale maneno makuba ilio sema ile pembe. Nalitazama hata mnyama yule akauawa mwili wake ukaharibiwa akatolewa ateketezwe kwa moto na mnyama ambao tunazungumzia pale bado ndio mnyama wa ufunuo 17 na pia mnyama wa ufunuo 13 na pia joka ambao tumekuwa tukiangazia wa ufunuo 12 na moto ambao unatajwa pale basi utaweza kuiona pale katika ufunuo 20 katika kule kuangamizwa kwa wakati Amen. Praise God. But through all of this, praise God, God's people will be victorious. We are told in Revelation chapter 15 from verse 2. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. And then they had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Basi wapendo tunapo malizia. Katika mambo haa yote, watu wa mungu watakuwa na ushindi. Watu wa mungu wataweza kushinda. Tunambiwa katika ukunuo kuminatano mstari wake ni wapidi. Kwamba, tena nikaona kitu kama mfano wa bahari ya kiyo. Ilio changamana samahani wa chandu die tena. Tena nikaona kitu kama mfano wa bahari ya kiyo, ilio changamana na moto, na wale wenye kushinda, watokao kwa yule mnyama, na sanamu yake, na kwa esabu ya jina lake, walikuwa wamesimama kando kando ya hiyo bahari ya kiyo, wenye vinubi vya mungu. Na wa wimba wimbo wa Musa, 
mtumwa wa Mungu na wimbo wa mwana kondoo wakisema ni makuu na ya ajabu matendo yako e bwana Mungu mwenyezi ni za haki na za kweli njia zako e mfalme wa mataifa ni nani asiyekucha e bwana na kulitukuza jina lako kwa kuwa wewe peke yako umtakatifu kwa maana mataifa yote watakuja na kusujudu mbele zako kwa kuwa matendo yako ya haki yamekwisha kufunuliwa amen wapendwa kweli watu wa Mungu wataweza kuwa na ushindi hatimaye haya yote tumeweza kuandikiwa ili tuweze kuwa na tumaini na tuweze kuwa na faraja na tuweze kuwa na ujasiri ya kwamba mwishowe watu wa Mungu walionekana wakiwa wameshinda amen mapendo na tumai ya kwamba mawazo hayo na fundisho hilo limekuwa la msaada kwako natumai kuna mambo ambayo umeweza kujifunza kuna mitazamo ambayo umeweza kuona ya kusaidia kuweza kuelewa unabii zaidi na jinsi ambavyo mambo haya yameweza kufunuliwa na yale ambayo tunaona yakifanyika katika ulimwengu huu Yordani inaendelea na kufurika lakini hata hivyo tumeweza kuona Mungu alitengeneza njia ya Waisraeli kupita na baisi hata nasi hata katika kipindi hiki Jordani hata kama inafurika itaweza kukauka basi cha muhimu ni uhakikishe uko katika upande wa Mungu cha muhimu ni uhakikishe unaelewa tabia yake Mungu na serikali yake na misingi ya serikali yake usije ukajipata katika upande wa adui maana misingi ya shetani ni ya kuangamiza na wenyewe wataachiliwa wajiangamize wenyewe lakini Mungu katika kufunua tabia yake na utukufu wake ndani yetu basi hii ndio itasababisha dunia kufunguka macho na kuona kweli wameweza kudanganya. Kwa hivyo katika wakati huu tunafungua kwa mtu yote ambaye ako na swali ama jambo angependa kuongezea, basi fungulia microphone yako na utaweza kupata nafasi ile. Ama labda kuna point ambayo imetajwa na hukuweza kuielewa vizuri, ungependa iweze kurudiwa nafasi ile bado iko. Kwa hivyo naomba tafadhali tuweze kufungulia microphone zetu wakati huu. Thank you so much Elder Demetrius for that presentation and uh, may God help us to be on his side and uh, that his glory may be revealed in us so that the world may become undeceived. Thank you so much for those thoughts and uh, may God bless you. Brethren, I believe you have been blessed by that uh, by that message and uh, this time we open for anyone who has a question or if you have a comment, I request that you may unmute your microphone at this time. Welcome brethren, karibuni sana. Sijui kama kuna yote ako na jambo angependa kusema ama ako na swali la kuweza kuuliza. Okay, sijui kama kuna yote ako na swali, unaweza fungulia microphone yako wakati huu ili upate nafasi ile. Okay, it seems as though. Yeah, it seems that yeah, you don't have well. any yeah. questions. Uh, basi, I believe then brethren that uh, the message is clear. I just request you to have time to go over this message. It will be made available on YouTube tomorrow uh, so that you can be able to download it and uh, go over it. And I'll also send the recorded audio and also the PowerPoint so that you may go over this message again. So thank you so much everyone for joining and uh, may God bless you. Thank you so much, Elder Demetrius, for taking us through that presentation. I now request that you may close us off with a word of prayer. Welcome. Praise God. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you very much for speaking to us. And uh, we pray that we will be prepared, prepared for the events ahead that, is, that are about to break upon us. We thank you for speaking. Empower us to speak. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you again, Elder Demetrius, for your time. And uh, may God bless you. And uh, looking forward to continuing with this series next week. So may you have a wonderful day and also a wonderful week. Pass our greetings to your family and also Amen. to the brethren. Likewise. Thank you so much. And for everyone who has joined, thank you so much. God bless you. I wish you a good evening. Until next time. Bye-bye.